Welcome to part 5 and the last video in this build series. We will complete the printer and do the first print. In my last video I mentioned that I would consider remixing this adapter and that's what I did. I added a wire channel for the LED logo and made room for some heat set inserts. These will have to go a bit below the surface, but that's not a problem with the right tip. I also had to change the cowl to fit the sensor position. The sensor position on the previous one was too close. And this is the way the LEDs should fit. I showed that incorrectly in the previous video. This is what the tool head looks like after all the changes and the new sensor position. I also changed the Pi mount to get better clearance for the USB power cable. During the first tests of movement, I discovered that I didn't have enough vertical travel on the Z axis and had to change the bed arms. I moved the front extrusion a bit down to get better access to the build plate. So quite a few changes. Just like in the Voronish 1 build, I'm going to use D-sub 9s to connect between the tool head and the controller card. And I think this is a pretty clean, no canvas or multiplexing needed. But I have to check that these cables are okay. I'm checking for continuity and shorts in these cables. I've attached the power supply with a couple of brackets, leaving some room for the airflow. And this is the connections and the MOSFET controller card. This isn't exactly mil spec wiring, but it will have to do. To hook up the display, you just need these two flat cables to the controller card. It's time to switch on the power for the first time. I'm always looking for smoke from somewhere, but it's okay. I'm pretty confident that this is correct, but you never know. Yeah, that's good. The lack of smoke doesn't really tell you that everything is working. And I had this issue. The MCU shuts down because of temperatures outside of the defined range. That's expected behavior from the SKR Pico. I then connected a dummy thermistor to just get this MCU running. With that in place, everything was normal. And you can see I have some temperatures, they are not correct, but I have a reading. Looking at the machine and the MCUs, you can see the two controller cards, the SKR 1.3 and the SKR Pico. I'm using an inductive probe for the Z unstop, and the way I test this is by using a metal object close to it and then check the status. And uh, please remember that this doesn't happen in real time. You have to refresh or reload. Moving on to checking the motion. And this was a fail because this moved in the incorrect direction. That's an easy fix with just inserting a invert sign in the configuration file. After that was changed, the motion was correct. And this is what you should see when you do the stepper bus. And I'll check this both on the left and on the right side, and of course on the rear as well, but you can't see that in these images. Yeah, that's good. I'm now testing out the nozzle scrub macro. This should move the printhead to where the scrubber is, and then do this motion. It will then home again. The silicone brush isn't mounted at this point in time. I'm getting ready for the first print, but that wasn't without fight. My build plate got some really bad battle scars. The nozzle dug in and made a lot of damage. And it's hard steel, so that didn't make it better. I'm now running the set tilt function checking each front corner and then in the center back. The position of the inductive probe isn't ideal on this printer, it's a bit too far from the nozzle. 
It works, but I will probably change this quite soon. The printer is now starting on a bed mesh. I think these uh, probe points could be spread a little bit more. The readings I get from this inductive probe are pretty consistent. Probably will change with the higher temperature though. With the set tilt and bed mesh completed, we can start the print. That starts with the homing and then the prime line. I'm printing the Voron cube as the first print. And this is the actual first print. No tests before this one, just check that it could extrude plastics. And I'm printing in black PLA. Cheap stuff. The set drives with the printed gears are busy doing all the set hops. I'm printing this in a 0.24 layer height and with a 0.6 nozzle. The beefy idlers are working hard. Not sure about the belt tension, looks a little bit loose. This is the A drive at work using those Van Tai stepper motors. The print is getting close to finishing. And I used all the default settings for the 0.24 layer height in Orca Slicer. And that's the Trident 300 settings. The print isn't too bad, it's uh, still some things I have to do with this, but it's absolutely not the worst first print I've ever seen. Thank you for watching and goodbye.